Despite the fact that it was a two-horse race at the end of the 1978 Scottish League season, Celtic managed to finish fifth and missed out on qualifying for the European competitions the following season. Consequently, Celtic supporters were forced to travel to Burnley for the Anglo-Scottish Cup, a brief competition with minimal significance, in instead of games in Munich or Madrid. Thus, this set the scene for the somewhat strange match between Burnley and Celtic in 1978. The last time Celtic supporters travelled to England in large numbers was for the 1970 European Cup semi-final match against Leeds, which was witnessed by 196,000 spectators over two legs and featured a spectacular staging post before they lost to Feyenoord in the San Siro final. And travel they did, thousands of them descending on Turf Moor on a balmy September evening. Many, a great many, in an advanced state of lubrication before the kickoff after establishing dominion over Burnley's pubs and off-licenses throughout the day. The Turf Moor visited by Celtic was very different to the ground today. No, wait, actually, the Bob Lord and Cricket Field stands are exactly as they were wooden seats and all, so, Spanish Inquisition moment, two sides were different, and actually make that one side, because the b-hole end behind the goal, and the long side, at the er side, were effectively a single terrace that wrapped round the corner. It was a good terrace too, more than big enough for the crowds that had watched Burnley narrowly miss a league and FA Cup double as recently as 1960. The section next to the cricket field was normally set aside for visiting supporters, and separated from the Burnley fans on the other side by tall iron railings. With those railings, 15,000 Celtic fans and an awful lot of alcohol. The scene is set. When the game began, they were all over the ground, but mainly concentrated in the cricket field, long side corner, separated from Burnley fans in the rest of the long side by an empty area and some iron railings. These Burnley fans taunted the visitors with chants of Rangers and Argentina. Arriving at the ground, one was immediately aware of an uneasy, combustible atmosphere. A powder keg awaiting the arrival of a spark. It was provided by Steve Kinden, who had the effrontery to put Burnley a goal up in the second half and all hell broke loose. A pitch invasion duly followed, which quickly accelerated into a full-blown riot. Missiles in the form of bottles or cans. Even the metal fences which notionally separated the two sets of supporters were being uprooted and hurled. The players scampered for the sanctuary of the changing rooms, and for peace-loving fans such as myself it was truly terrifying for a while. Burnley fan Neil gave us his recollection of the events. I worked in Accrington at the time. The landlord at our local said a van load of Celtic fans had arrived at his pub about five, and they stayed till chucking out time without ever going the last six miles to watch the match. They were there in their thousands. Most of them were stupendously pissed, and they were mean, aggressive and spoiling for a scrap. Outside the turf it was chaos, with no segregation between fans as the police were hopelessly outnumbered. Hundreds of Celtic fans were simply jumping over the turnstiles. There were battles everywhere, on the terraces, on the b-hole steps, outside the pie stall, behind the long side, everywhere. The air was full of flying plastic glasses and the odd coin and real glass bottle. There was a pitch invasion which in my recollection was actually begun by the few hundred remaining clarets in the long side, surrounded on three sides and realising that the game was up and it was a case of the pitch offering the only escape route. The jocks followed, having broken down the fencing that theoretically should have separated the two sets of fans on the long side. There was then a massive running battle on the pitch and it was getting very nasty indeed. Going for a slash was quite an ordeal. They were skimming empty whiskey bottles along the back wall as soon as you popped your head out. It was like one of those fairground games. My abiding memory is that the long side was taken. They broke through the fencing and used the debris as missiles. There must have been 5,000 more than the official figure suggests inside the turf that night, all of whom were Celtic, as the police gave up and just let them jump the turnstiles. Sheer weight of numbers told, literally. I reckon the crush is why the fence gave way and it's a miracle there weren't any deaths. Once the fence came down, the clarets had nowhere to go but onto the pitch. I was in the relative safety of the cricket field stand at the time. However, I remember Celtic fans destroying the fence between the fans and using pieces of it as spears. The cops with their dogs and horses had no chance. You should have seen Burnley Town Centre the day after the game. I do recall a group of Burnley fans remaining in the long side, 
Not many, though, and they must have been scared to death. Like all clarets who witnessed the trouble, it is a night I will never forget. We were in the cricket field stand adjacent to the away fans. Initially, they concentrated on the Burnley fans next to them in the long side, heaving whatever they could over the dividing fence. They then ripped up the fence and hurled the metal javelins at our fans. Later in the match, they started to climb into our stand, some with blood-soaked bandaged heads, looking for all the world like pirates boarding a ship. The long side had a fence to separate the fans in those days, and after throwing hundreds of empties over it, they then proceed to break the fencing up. They threw concrete and fence posts at the Burnley fans. I saw a man close behind me get struck with a lump of concrete and fall to the floor with blood gushing from his head. Neither police nor the club had a clue how to handle it. The game continued as hundreds of Burnley fans tried to escape the area. The game was suspended eventually to allow them to escape and watch the game from elsewhere in the ground. It was a miracle nobody was killed or severely injured. I was scared to death. Absolutely the worst night of violence I have ever experienced. Bottles, steel railings, bricks and any other detritus the Celtic fans could find were coming our way. I was with my sister and I honestly thought we were goners. I was at the midpoint of the home end of the long side. Halfway along, halfway down. It was horrible. It wasn't just the debris coming at us from the right. They'd found their way across at the back of the long side, where the steps led down to the toilets. And so we got rushed from the right and from behind, was shepherded off and out of the ground by police horses and not let back in. I didn't bother going up to Glasgow for the return leg. When some semblance of order was restored, the players re-emerged, and Burnley held on to the 1-0 lead which had caused all the trouble. Burnley would win the second leg at Celtic Park too, and went on to win the Anglo-Scottish Cup, defeating Mansfield Town and Oldham Athletic. What a strange little tournament it was. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed the show. Please subscribe to help our channel grow.